This is the first in a series of videos where I'm going to be pulling out some of my favourite images in the View Night Library and saying a little bit about why I think they're so interesting and so important. I'm going to start with one of my favourite artists, a painter who was born in 1514 in Candia, which is modern Crete, called El Greco. El Greco was uh, trained in the Byzantine tradition and his work at the beginning of his career obeyed all of those conventions. So it was very um, formulaic. Um, that doesn't mean it's not beautiful, but it was very formulaic and it um, felt kind of out of step with what was happening in Italy at that time. But El Greco didn't stay in Candia. He moved from there to Venice because at the time um, Candia was part of the Venetian Empire and he absorbed everything that was going on there. Venice at that time was a hotbed of experimentation with oil painting and he absorbed influences from people like Tintoretto. Um, but he moved from Venice to Rome, the center of the world at that time where he hoped he was going to gain great patronage from the popes and the great Renaissance rulers. And um, there was a new pope in town and he was looking for someone to do some work. Michelangelo had relatively recently died. And if you think about Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel ceiling, well, this new pope was rather unsure, shall we say, about the nudity in it. He was a very pious individual. And so um, he convened um, artists to talk about what they could do. And very unwisely, El Greco said, I'll give the job to me. I could do it just as fine. He went on to say that he thought that Michelangelo was a worthy man, but that he never learned how to paint. Now, so great was Michelangelo's reputation that it's thought this caused doors to shut for El Greco in Rome, so he had to leave if he was going to be able to have a living as an artist. And that's part of the reason why he went from Rome to Madrid, where he hoped to carry favour with King Philip in, the, um, uh, in Spain. And um, it looks like that didn't happen either, because he moved from Madrid to Toledo, where he settled and where he painted some extraordinary works. Now, what's remarkable about this story is that despite his um, apparent disrespect for Michelangelo, his late works, and there are two examples of them in the um, View Night Library, later works, there are two examples in the View Night Library, there's St. Martin and the Beggar, um, which was painted sometime around about um, 1597, and um, also um, Madonna and Child with um, St. Martina and St. Agnes, which was painted just at the sort of turn of the um, 16th century, which is in the National Gallery of Art in Washington. If you look at these paintings, you'll see that the figures are very stretched. They're very kind of odd looking, etiolated, stretched figures. And um, this actually owes a lot to Michelangelo's late Mannerist style. So what you can see in El Greco is this amazing synthesizing of his Byzantine training and the concentration not on the outward appearance of things but on the spirit of things. And then this very late Renaissance vision that he borrows from Michelangelo and that results in these incredibly fresh, remarkably modern looking images that actually you can see echoed in paintings by people like Picasso. If you look at Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, that composition, like that could come straight from El Greco. And, um, you know, you, I think there's also something in it which reminds me of um, painters like Franz Marc or um, other painters from that very early modernist period. Anyway, have a look in the View Night Library for these two works by El Greco, an artist who I find so fascinating because of how he straddles those periods of art history and fascinating also because his work is just so fresh. It looks like it could have been painted within the last hundred years or yesterday. Uh, it's remarkable.